We're good? All right. So <clears throat> we have a, an ex- distinguished guest tonight. Katrina is sitting in with us. <laughs> I really appreciate you guys coming in, uh, coming in tonight and taking the time to be here. I'm rushing back from your dinners, wherever it may be. Um, we're going to spend about 30 minutes of time going over some information that um, might be new to you, might be old to you. All I ask is that you have an open mind. Um, one of the big things, one of the big things that we do here is we pride ourselves in educating our, our individuals that come in through the office, and it's very, very important that um, you understand why you're doing what you're doing. Okay, um, being here, you get a little, a little extra as opposed to just watching it on Facebook because um, you get to ask me questions afterwards when we shut down. Um, if you want to stay for a few minutes, uh, it's very important to understand that that open mind that you have, um, no matter matter what age you're at is is there okay a lot of people I was talking to someone earlier today about um, our headaches class and um, and she was like I know a lot of that stuff but it's nice to hear it again um, repetition even it uh, it went from young age to old age doesn't matter we can always learn and our bodies can be retrained Don asked me a great question about um, patterns and things that um, that go on um, in our spines um, over time and it's important to understand that um, you know from our patterns in our structure and everything that we do, even in the way we respond to things, starts from a very young age. So it's very important. It's very important that you um, look at those patterns and say, "Oh, how am I responding to something? How am I reacting to something? Um, is my body reacting because this is what it learned? Is this um, is my body reacting um, a certain way because that's what I did in the past?" And you have to remember, you can change that. One of the, the big things is that what you've, what you've done up until this point has brought you to this point, okay? It has brought you to this specific level. So individuals, uh, Katrina and I were talking about this the other day, um, individuals come in and they say they have an ache or a pain, and they say, oh, you know, it just happened the other day. No, not really. Um, it's years and years of degeneration. So keep in your keep in your mind when you're when I, when we're talking tonight that you know who is it that you know that that has is complaining about something and says oh it just started, but in reality it probably started 20, 30, 40 years ago, or even five years ago, or even you know two years ago. It's something that accumulates over time, and that's a little bit about what we're going to be talking about tonight. And it was a great question that Don asked because it sort of said, "Okay, this is where this is where we're going." Having said that, I want to start this particular workshop because you're here um, asking you a question. Who has heard different things about why people should and should not get adjusted through chiropractics? You know, like who has heard either horror stories or good stories or, or, you know, things like why would you go or why do you continue to go? Who has heard stuff? Anybody? Right? Okay. So what are some of the things that you've heard? Go ahead, Cindy. My husband got uh, adjusted, and he doesn't really have the personality. And he felt that when he got adjusted, he ended up going in and having back surgery. He thought that the, that the adjustment caused his back surgery? Yes. Okay. That's and and that's it's a it's a shame. Maybe if we would have educated him beforehand, he would have had an understanding of that. Um, unfortunately, that's like saying, "Okay, here, take this Tylenol," and you know, I took this Tylenol, and all of a sudden, I had to get back surgery. Doesn't make sense. Yeah, you, know, you know, but that's but that's you know that's and that's a good point. That that brings up the point of exactly what I was talking about. So, like I've had three knee surgeries, and and having three knee surgeries when I was younger, they would say, "Here, take the medication, take the medication." But my knees didn't start to give way right then and there. They started at that point where they hurt when I was playing football and everything else. But I didn't have the surgery until I was 25. So I was playing football when I was 15. So that's 10 years of abuse on my knees, and they kept giving me the medication, and I didn't feel so I could keep playing. 
So the thing is, it's important to understand. And you know what? There's time and place for back surgery, but he probably had many, many years prior to that. And like I said, who do you know that, that has had many years of abuse on their body, especially if you do physical labor or if you're doing something of that nature or even standing at, at a desk or, you know, or even if you're sitting at a desk, which, which is important to understand because when you sit... Okay, and I apologize, you're all sitting now. I should get you up and start running. That. But when you sit, you actually put 40% more of your body weight on your lower back. So think about, think about that, okay? Um, think about that. You put 40 more percent of your weight on your lower back when you sit. What do a majority of people do nowadays? Sit, sit right? Car, to restaurant, to, <laughs> to work, things of that nature. So what are some of the other things that people have heard? Anybody else want to share? No? Okay, that's fine. How about you, Katrina? Have you ever, you, you, you being new here um, as, as an employee, you just started working here six, seven months ago, right? And um, what, was it, what was it that you said to me the other day? You were like, I didn't realize that it was for more than just neck and back pain or something along those lines, right? What, did, what was, do you recall that conversation? We were talking about how you said, you know, because your whole family gets adjusted now, right? Yeah, I mean, you have four generations of people in your family get adjusted. So tell me, what, what, do you remember that conversation? Um, just like with my TMJ. Right. Spine. Yeah. Right. And you thought it was just spine. Yeah, right. So the thing is, it can, it can adjust, like, because I adjust limbs, I adjust, you know, I adjust the, the, the different joints of the body, and people don't understand that subluxations can be everywhere. And everybody understands what the word subluxation is. It's a misalignment in, in the spine, usually, um, but other joints can be subluxated that impinges upon the nerves. Okay, so basically you're, you're having an impingement on the nerves in your spinal structure, um, and that's what's, that's what's causing it. So thinking of that, I'm going to give you um, a quick example of something that is a necessity for life um, that, um, that we look at, and it's an example of a houseplant, okay? You have a houseplant. Who has houseplants? You do, okay. Nobody has houseplants here? Wow, that, there's a reason for that, isn't there? <laughs> do you have brown thumbs? That's pretty impressive. That's <laughs> and then you didn't bring it with you. Well, you know, and that well, and that's a good example of that's a good example. So what are the three things a plant needs to survive? Water, sunlight. Well, oxygen, yeah, but that's nutrition. Oxygen is nutrition and nutrition. Okay, whether it's in the soil or from the air, right? So it needs those it needs those three things to survive. Are all plants and flowers the same? Has anybody ever had a bonsai try and, a tree and try to keep it alive? They're not easy. To, they're hard to keep alive. If you can, um, you need, really need to be very, very, very respective of them. Um, and 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 it's really un, it's it's really important to understand that. So I have house plants in my house, right? And if I don't water the plant, what happens? It dies. But does it die right away? No. It takes time. What happens to the plant before it dies? Flowers can fall off even before then. What? They will, right? They look sad. You know, I mean, they really do. I mean, they start going like this. The leaves start to crumble. You know, they look sad, right? But what can you do to, to help them? You water them, right? You water them. But they have to be in soil. You can't just put them in water. Okay, you could. But you can't just put them in water. Yeah, they have to be in soil. Soil is the nutrients. That it gets and the oxygen, right? And, the, and proper air. We had talked about the proper water, things of that nature. Um, it's really important. It's really important. It's really important to understand. So that's just like you waiting until you have a problem and saying, "Oh, I can take care of it now." But what does that do to the plant if you wait until it wilts and then you give it water? It stresses it out. The plant, the plant at some point is not going to want to survive, not going to want to keep doing that. That's what we do with our health. Okay, that's what we do with our health. We wait until we're wilting and then we say, oh, let me do something about this. And then when we start, we start and then we get better, quote unquote, and then we sit down and we sit down and we look at it and we say to ourselves, huh, okay, I feel better now. I don't have to do that anymore. You still have to water the plant. You still have to take care of yourself, right? 
So these are important, important aspects to understand. You still need to give it nutrition. Okay, you still need to, you, I mean, you need to do these things. Okay, because that plant will wilt or die if it doesn't have any one of the three. If it doesn't have light, it doesn't, and you know, and if it adds too much light, what happens? It can burn, depending on the plant, right? Or, you know, or, or it can die. So you, you, it, there's, each condition is different for each plant, just as much as it is different for us. Okay, but don't wait till you wilt. Okay, and that's the and that's the and that's the whole process that that we're talking about um, that that we're talking about. So I want everybody to. Can you grab a rubber band and uh, pass them on? So everybody have a rubber band. Okay, when everybody has a rubber band, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to take the rubber band and just put it around your finger and wrap it a few times. It doesn't have to be super tight, but just leave it there. And just, let, let, just let's continue with the workshop. Okay, so, so the, big thing, the big thing here that, we have, to, that we, have to, um, we have to figure out is why is it chiropractic for all ages? Well, think about it. <clears throat> when a baby is born, right, and we're gonna go. We're gonna go through the whole process, right? And these pieces are out. Good. When a baby is born, and most 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 models of of spines that you get are usually male pelvises. So a male pelvis is a little smaller. Um, it's not. It's not the 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 same shape as a woman's pelvis. So it's different. But think about it. <clears throat> Look at where the baby has to come out of. That's insane. I mean, the head is not that much, I mean, it has to reshape itself to get through there. These ligaments have to stretch. I mean, this takes a lot of work, okay? It's not easy. I remember when I went to, when I went to, uh, we were doing, uh, 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 not Lamaze classes, but Bradley classes for our first child, you know, their birthing classes. And the woman goes, okay, everybody put, take all their fingers, put them in their mouth and pull. And uh, hold it there. That's, and then you just keep holding it for five, ten minutes. It starts to hurt, but eventually it goes numb. And what ends up happening is there are, we have natural ability of our body to heal. But think about what happens to the baby as the baby is born. The baby is usually pulled through that, that canal. Okay, the, the head is taken. The head is taken, and then it's twisted 180 degrees to get one. They get one shoulder out, and then they twist it. Your face just made like, like, oh, my God, that sounds horrible. It is. It is. It's really horrible. I mean, it's really. Horrible. They twist the. They twist it to get the other shoulder out, and then people never check the spine or the structure to see if there's any sort of subluxation or change in the spine. So think about if you took a little, like with bonsai trees. I was talking about bonsai trees. What do they do? They actually put wires on the on the branches to bend them and have them grow in a certain shape. Okay. Think about it. You're pulling, and the spine is not lined up properly after you're done. The stress that's put on there, okay, what do you think is going to happen to that child as they grow? Their first experience is not in normal alignment, okay? So that's what they call in it, what's coming up now. There was a book written by a guy named Antonovsky, and they've been talking about um, what they call the salutogenic model. Um, and the salutogenic model is one that deals with what we do throughout our life and how we are coherent throughout our life and how we adapt to things. Okay, and I'm just really learning about this stuff myself. And that model in itself, in itself helps to distinguish where they're trying to determine what may be causing illness. So those are the big things that, that we're looking at. So think about the stress that you're putting. Yeah, I know. So everybody, so, so now that we've gotten through the baby's birth and understanding why it's important to ch check a child um, for, for subluxation, and who's, who's ever heard, oh, why do you get your kids adjusted? That's the reason. Because think about it, we're talking about sitting on your bum. Well, they sit, they get up and sit down, get up, sit down, like, you know, an average of about 2,500 to 4,000 times by the time they're two, because they're learning how to walk and they're running all over the place. So it is important to check them from a young, young age to go from there. So now getting back to the rubber band, whose finger is nice and purple? Okay. <laughs> all right. So, so think about this. When you first put it on, you felt it. After a while, it starts going purple, but it starts going cold and it starts going numb. 
That's what happens to the nerves when you have a subluxation. What happens to the nerves, after a while, you, don't, you some, become desensitized to the problems that are in your body. So I can give this a needle. I can massage it. I can do acupuncture on it. Okay, but the problem is still there. So if you remove the problem, now you can take the rubber band off, your finger will feel a lot better. <laughs> Thank God, huh? <laughs> oh yeah, it's nice and purple, huh? <laughs> Hopefully we won't lose that, huh? Um, but, but the thing is, but the thing is, but you see how each person reacted a little differently. But that's, as a chiropractor, that's what we're trying to do is remove that interference. So, so when a baby is born, we're trying to remove the interference so the brain and body can function better. And obviously there are some workshops that we look at. Then, then, we, go into, then we go into the stages of a child. Um, a child now we're going into pre-adolescence, toddler um, all those ages and things of that nature, and people go and they take their kids in for wellness checks, things, things of that, things of that sort, and they're doing really, really, they're doing really, really well. Okay, but they never look to the structure of the spine to see it as a preventative. Okay, so what we do is, um, you know, we start training a kid to play a sport, especially nowadays. You know, people are so, so, you know, the, um, you know, the, the parents sometimes are so crazy about, oh, you've got to learn the sport. You got to do, and most of the sports are, are imbalanced. They're one sided. Okay, so what happens? Now you're training the body to be imbalanced. Okay, and then, and then you look at, um, and for some people, it's easy to remember. Some people, it's not. Um, for me, I'm reliving it with my daughter right now. Um, she's 16, 17 years old. And, and you know, the things that, that we go through as teenagers, high school kids are mean, okay? They are nasty. They, are, they don't care about, you know, for some of us, this is more realistic and it's closer to reality because they're some are involved, some are not right now, or just out of it. But you think about all of those things that happen, especially nowadays with the phones and everything. You know, things never end. You know, they go home and they're constantly a, a, assaulted with all this information. And and you know, when I was growing up, I don't know about you guys, but I know when I was growing up, if I had a fight with a guy, I'd leave, I'd go home, I'd cool off, I'd come back, and say, "Hey, what's up? How's it going?" You know, or we hated each other and we went our separate ways. But we never, it wasn't the constant barrage of information, okay, of things of that nature. It was, it was simpler because you could walk away from it without any, anybody else trying to do, do these things. So the thing is now you have all these pressures and all these things. And psychosocially and socially what is supposed to be accepted and not accepted. Because as a chiropractor, I was out of the norm. Okay, as, as, as a kid growing up, I went to art school for two, for, um, for, uh, initially when I went to high school, I went to art school. Okay, and I went to art school, I was definitely out of the norm. Okay, I was definitely out of the norm. You know, I was never, I never fit in with just one group of people. I always had friends in a lot of different groups of people. I mean, when I went to high school, they used to have racial food riots in the, in the, in the cafeteria. Okay, I mean, our school was primarily, um, primarily, um, it, it was about 65% minority and it's about 25% white and I think about 10% Asian at, at that time. And this was in the early 80s. And, you know, and the thing is, you know, and I grew up in New York City, so did I see shootings? Did I see stuff? I did. But all of that stuff affects the way you respond to something, okay? It, it affects the way you respond to something. I found my father um, hanging off a roof when I was 13 or 12, 13. Um, he was an alcoholic, and, you know, we, it saved his life. It changed. He never drank another drop for, for 28 years. But my... My whole life, my body was trained to respond to things by the things that I was exposed to. And how does that affect your health? I was never adjusted back then. I had migraines so bad that by the time I was 25 years old, I was on six medications for just my migraines. And I was taking asthma and allergy medication from the age of 12, 13. Okay, I was very sick as a child. My body, that's what it learned. That's the salutogenic model. It's how your body reacts to things, the coherence that it has and the adaptation. And all the things that you have throughout your life att attach to this. So if I was getting adjusted at an earlier age, that would have been one component of my life that would have been clearer and maybe my body would have responded differently. So it's an important thing to understand because when you are interfered with in your neurology, okay, from brain to body, it's like static on a radio. Do you guys know what a radio is? Yes. 
I have to ask, okay, I have to ask, because a lot of kids don't live, they watch YouTube, or they, it's digital music, right? There's no radios, okay? Um, sometimes Sirius XM, but that's not even ra radio where you have to tune it in. But if you think about it, you know, like, and, and, you know, and I can remember in the old days with the TV, like, you would turn to one of the channels that wasn't really coming in really well, and you'd have to play with the knob until the static went away, and it, you, any of you guys remember that? I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and you sit in there. Well, when you have a disturbance or a, an interference in your nervous system, that's what it's like. It's like that static. Now, now, this is what your body is now starting to process. So every, everything that you're exposed to is processed through this interfered system. It's not getting the proper information. It's getting some of the information, but you may not process it properly. So what happens? It starts to affect the way the brain, the brain structure uh, um, develops. It starts to affect the way those, those connections actually start to happen because that's the way our body learns. Even from, 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 from that age, you're now getting into, you now get into the age of mid-20s where you start working and whatever your work is, you know, you have habits with your work. Physical labor, you know, do you get shocked? Um, do, you, do you carry a bag on your shoulder all the time on one time like you may, do, may have done in school? Those things are habits that you start to pick up over, over years. From a standpoint of neurologically, that's what your body thinks is normal. But what ends up happening is there is something called neuroplasticity, which they say even at whatever age, obviously we are more plastic and moldable when we were younger, but it can still change even up until the day we die. Okay, so it's important to understand, it's important to understand that, okay, now we have all of these things that have been going on in our life that are adding to how our body responds to everything. So even a discussion that you have, like when you first came into this room, I asked you to have an open mind. And some of the things you say that I say you may not agree with, and some of them you may agree with, but your body is going to respond in kind because you're like, well, I don't believe that. You know, you know what's the classic, you know, the classic defensive position, really? You know, this is what people do, and we have to be open to the conversation. And that's one of the biggest, things, the, the biggest things that I always tell people. You have to be open to the conversation and changing these things. So I'm going to leave, um, leave you with a few things that um, might be really um, out there in the sense of I'm going to show you a graph of the salutogenic mos, um, model. And it's really overwhelming because it's got a lot of stuff on it. But I'm going to point out a few things. I'll point out a few things just so you guys get an idea of where I'm coming from um, with this. So <clears throat> understand that chiropractic, when it was founded, was not founded on the premise of neck and back pain. In 1895, a, um, a gentleman by the name of D.D. Palmer adjusted Harvey Lillard. Harvey Lillard, Harvey Lillard couldn't hear for 17 years. He was a janitor. And he regained his hearing. So, you know, back in the 1890s, it was like, oh, we found the cure for, you know, cure for, uh, for hearing. No, it wasn't. Even prior to that, he was doing what they called magnetic healing. He was a, a, a sort of like an energy healer, like today with Reiki and things of that nature. Um, but he understood that there was an actual physical matter or concept to what we were doing. And he founded chiropractic on the basis that finally, as they went along and they developed chiropractic, they found it wasn't based on the sense of just back and neck pain. It was, sensed on the base, it was based on the sense of let us get the body functioning to its best level and then it will do what it's supposed to. Okay, We can't always predict. Really, honestly, the power that made the body heals the body. I can adjust you, help you feel a little better, but my main goal, and this is what Don was asking about, is do we have patterns? There are patterns that come up in people. And as I learn those patterns in years and years of adjusting individuals, I have people that have been here 15, as long as I've been open. I've been open since 2003 up here. So that's what, 16 years, okay? Which we just celebrated a couple of weeks ago. Um, didn't tell anybody, but, uh, but 16 years they've been coming to the office and they've stayed healthy. They've avoided pro major issues. Does it mean they never had a problem? No, we do things that, that, that hurt, uh, hurt our bodies. But they have b understood how they've become healthier and understood how over time they've, um, they've, they've become much, much, much more aware 
of their bodies and what they need to do to stay healthier. And part of that is diet. Part of that is resting. Part of that is exercise. Part of that is mental attitude. That's all important. So like your, your husband has, has this thing that he's already learned. He's already put the blame on something. Okay? And to change that would, would take, would take, you know, would take a, a, a large, large, large understanding of what's going on. But the first point is that he has to be open-minded to it. And if you're not, and if you're already shut down, someone will say something to you. And have you ever spoken to someone and they say something and you're like not listening to them anymore because you don't like what they said? That happens. That's salutogenic. That's the salutogenesis model. That's all how we process what we sense, uh, sense in the world. So I'm hoping that this will come on. It's not coming out. Oh, there it is. I bet you didn't know that. <laughs> but if you, if you go too far, it falls out. So don't do that. <laughs> so like I said, this chart, when you look at it, there's a lot of stuff on this chart. So let me just see if I can make this a little clearer. about as clear so what happens so if I was sitting out here looking at this I'd shut down because all the letters are so small <laughs> you know I would I mean really seriously it would be like that's because my mind is like okay give me big stuff so I can see it but ultimately um, what what they're saying is you have here they have these psychosocial stressors okay um, accidents you know um, psychic conflicts horrors of history or direct things that you had. So some people like PTSD, things of that nature, you know, like that have been in the military. Um, a lot of the guys that I know that were down at 9-11, um, my brother was there. Um, my brother's a retired NYPD sergeant. And um, a lot of the guys that, that were there at 9-11, at PTSD type stuff, post-traumatic stress disorder type stuff. Because it was amaz amazingly, it was crazy if, you're, if you were down there at all, if you saw any of the stuff that was going on. Um, you know, things that are outside of the norm of society, um, social relationship, um, and then physical and biochemical stresses. So we deal, we talk a lot about the physical and biochemical stuff. But, you know, really, honestly, there's, there, it all starts with the psychological um, response to something, okay, because we're exposed to it, you know. And even our body, when you're touched a certain way, there's a response, and then there's a thought that goes through your head. So you have to really, you have to really look at that. And then what they do is they look at make major psychosocial things, knowledge, things that we have. One of the things that we talk about in the, um, in the workshop about um, safety pin cycle is, is how um, you have the educated, and, uh, educated, um, educated mind versus the universal mind or the universal intelligence versus educated um, intelligence. And sometimes our educated minds get in the way of what our body can naturally do. And the thing is, just saying that to people, they're like, what do you mean? Because all of a sudden, because everything is about knowledge, but it's not, a, it's not about the wisdom of that knowledge. So it's, it's important to understand. So this was, this was created by a guy named Antonovsky. He was, he was actually, a, um, he was actually a, a, a provider of health. And what he did was he actually researched um, coping. He would do coping surveys. He would do, and he dealt with people with MS, cancer, um, and uh, dealt how they and cardiovascular diseases, and so how they dealt with dealt with uh, dealt with everything that was going on after those diseases. So this guy started out as someone that was looking at it from a pathogenic model, meaning there was some sort of pathology that he was looking at. And it's just like, you know, I talk about in the spine where people say, oh, I have arthritis, and that's what's causing my problem. That's not what's causing your problem. Something caused the arthritis. What caused the arthritis? Okay, and that's why that's important to understand because that's what, when we're talking about chiropractic for all ages, we're trying to prevent the cause of the arthritis that's going on. We're trying to make sure that your body is functioning at a better level. Does it mean it's going to happen like that specifically? It depends on what else you do with your life. Okay, so he went from this pathogenic model where he was looking at cardiovascular disease, he was looking at major cancers, he was looking at all this stuff, and went to the salutogenic model and said, okay, what is causing that? 
And that's what this is all about. And that's what chiropractic is about. And that's why it's important to get people checked regardless of what age they are. It's important that they understand that getting checked doesn't mean that they're going to have to be here for care. But at some point, they're going to have to learn how to take care of their spine for the rest of their lives. Whether it be from an infant, which should be obviously a newborn, that should be the ideal. But it doesn't matter. It's never too late. Because you can choose now to change what's going to happen in the future. And that's the point that we're looking at here. So if you want a copy of this chart, um, just ask me. I have, I have, I made some copies of it. Um, and we just have to figure out, does our reaction to the world and how our bodies respond to things, what's the buffer? What is it that we are, we are, we are acknowledging and not acknowledging in our bodies and allowing our bodies to heal? People need to understand this. Chiropractic is just one of the components, but is a very important component because on the vitality of needs, okay, vitality of needs, the nervous system sits at the top, okay? Not nutrition, not water, not exercise, the nervous system. Because if the nervous system doesn't function properly, nothing else does. I thank you very much for, for coming this evening. If you have any questions, I'm going to stick around. Can you grab that and shut that down? Um, if, uh, if you want a copy, let me know. Um, of this of this slide.